Hello and welcome to Dubai Trends and welcome to this general update video of a mess, basically. In a poll I recently did, you guys requested a, a general update video opposed to some more specific ones. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to go clockwise and we're going to talk about maybe some advanced electronics, weathering track, um, some wiring. I have some samples here I want to show you guys. Bridge that's in place, more wiring that we're actually um, I'm working on right now. I laid some track already, and we got some more test pieces right there, and whoop, more wiring. <laughs> A lot to talk about, and there is of course the the lift gate that I finished. The lift gate you already saw the protection mechanism here on this side to ensure that the trains cannot drive off the end of the layout and the locking mechanism there as well, the hinge. And on this side, we have something that's even simpler than that, just like that. That's the piece of wood that covers that up. I am working on a speci uh, specific video to show how I designed this and how you can design your own lift gate. So we're gonna go clockwise. Let's start right here. So this is the core of the electrical system. Let's just go over the components quickly. It starts off with a uh, main bus. It's a red black, uh, wire and black wire. And from the main bus, you want to have these feeders that connect to your track like that. And then you need to connect the main bus to the feeder. So that's really easy. We have these uh, clamping pieces and they basically go on the main bus and then you clamp them into place. And once you have done that, you can take these uh, male connectors and they just fit in there just like that. And that's that, easy peasy. That is really about all that's about that. You also have these fancy connectors. They have a little protection unit over them, but it's, I think, but it more or less comes down to the same thing. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and how that actually works and the real benefits. Um, and the main one being, you don't need to solder under your track. Now, I also got me a bunch of these. And there's a lot of talk about this online, how people do this. So let me explain what the idea is. Let's move over here a bit. So let's just come to this section of the layout. Here you see a turnout. It diverges from this track here to these, to these two, two tracks. Somewhere right here will be the switch bar that you can throw. And the idea is you glue this underneath the layout and then you put a rod in it towards the front of the layout. So you can pull and push the rod and then this little micro switch just uh, pulls, yeah, throws. And the rod also goes up from here to connect to the uh, throw bar turnout. And what's the benefit of this? Well, that you automatically switch the polarity of the frog. And if you want to know why that's important, check the video that's just right there where I explain uh, frogs and polarity and how you can switch them. So I got a whole bag of the micro switches for that. And I'm also going to put some links in uh, my comments down below where you can actually uh, buy, I've sorted it out already, and you can buy these uh, connectors um, that I've been talking about, and these, these red ones as well. And I'll put the bus there as well. And this, the one I bought is actually a kit from NCE. Um, and these are great kits. So if I can find that kit online, I'll just post the kit because it has all the right dimensions and gauges uh, for the wires, which is important uh, for fire safety and all that other boring, but also important stuff. So let's move on to this section. You guys want the general update. So we're going to talk about everything. Um, I wanted to test the method of um, gluing track to uh, the, the bench work with wood glue. I just put a bead of wood glue here. I smudged my finger just like that. I pressed the uh, track into the wood glue. I think it was something like this and I let it dry. And this test is all about what the wood glue does to the track and not what the glue does to the bench work. So once it was dry, it was really difficult to peel off. So I had to actually put a screwdriver underneath and then it just flew off just like that. And that is exactly what I was looking for. I want a track to be uh, glued to the, uh, the bench work, but if I want to remove it without damage, I can do that so as well. So onto this section right here. And I have been laying track and it runs nicely, must say so, so myself. 
So some people prefer Mountain Dew, but if you want a good pasta, don't use Mountain Dew. Use this Bavilla sauce. It's way better than Mountain Dew in your pasta. And um, I use this to、uh, as a way to lay my track. So for something、um, straightforward like this, let's put them just like that to keep the track in place once the, once the glue is there. And for sections of flex track, I just use these push pins. So I put glue down, I put the track down, the general shape、uh, together with the push pins, and then、um, I put some weight on it. Or sometimes I just leave the push pins and let that、uh, glue. Now I'm really happy I took the four mil cork because I think if I took the two mil cork, then this idea would not have worked. And this is so convenient, as you can see right here. So now we're going onto the wiring. I do、um, when I lay track, I lay track and do the wiring all in one go, at least from the top side. So for that, we move on a little bit to this mess right here, and this mess will somehow explain itself. Let me just put the camera, put it a little better, so we can actually see something. Let's see. Let me see what we can see. I see and I saw a seesaw. So here we go. So this is the this is for my old layout. This is the bus that I've been talking about. So here is a black one, and I have these blue connectors clamped onto it, and I plugged in though there are all these connectors, and. This connector is attached to the feeder wire, and at the end of the feeder wire is this rail joiner. So how I made it the first time around is I made all these wires with a rail joiner. You lay the track, you put the joiner in there, you drill a small hole for the feeder, and you put the feeder wire through the hole. And then what you have is you have all these feeder wires dangling around underneath the layout. Some are red and some are black, and all you have to do is take、um, a special clamp. And clamp these connectors onto it, and plug it into the bus. It's as simple as that. There's no soldering underneath the layout. But now I'm going to recycle these, and there's this connector to it, so I can't drill a small hole.、So、I was thinking first to drill a bigger hole, and to just wrestle this through the hole and use it. But the hole's too big; it's like five mil. What I'm actually going to do is these connectors are so cheap. I'm just going to cut them all off, drill a way smaller hole. Um, wiggle the wire through, and then just put a new connector at the end. The benefit of having a small hole is that when you start ballasting, your ballast doesn't go through the hole, and the glue doesn't disappear down the hole as well, falling onto whatever is down below. So if this was all a bit fast for your taste, don't worry. There's going to be a special video all about wiring. And onto this section. So the apron arrived from the car flow. So I just took that piece out. This is where the bridges are going to be,、um, so I need to fill this in. I have some more cardboard left, and I'm going to have three bridges,、uh, a little bit offset. I might have a ballast on the bridge on that one, and、um, unballast it for these two. Let's see how that works out. And then here we go onto the test station for the painting, because I made a piece of test bed. So many puns that could be made now for the test bed. But、um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to test painting of a piece of track, and which colors to use,、um, and everything like of that. And I also want to make sure that colors complement the ballast. Now, if you're wondering which colors I'm using, in the description down below, I will add a link to these exact colors, and you can buy them there. So I'm happy with this. I'll show you in a minute a little bit more. Yeah, I actually wanted to paint all the flex track and all the rails as well. But then I realized that when you paint the rails and then you bend the flex track, that the paint will actually be scraped off、um, by the uh, spikes. Um, yeah, just like that. <laughs> Self-explanatory. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to paint all the rust on the the, the rails that is fixed.、Um, and if you have a fixed piece of track, then you just paint both. But the rails that is not fixed, I'm gonna do that once everything is laid down. Because it is just way easier to paint track、um, when, when you have it on the bench work. We have it laying down here. So this is the first batch that I did. Can you guess which one is the odd one out? Well, it's obviously that one. That one's not been painted yet, and all these have been painted. At least step one of three.、I、just did a general paint over of all the track, 
Now I still need to do some individual ties just to lighten it up a bit, then a wash, uh, and, then, <laughs> and then the rust, and then this set is done. And I have a small batch of turnouts as well. I'm gonna paint those. And with these turnouts and most of this track right here, I will be able to get all the way from there through here. It splits two tracks, the arrival, departure, and the other track. Um, get back to this main line section of the main railroad and then at least finish it to the bridge. And I'm gonna actually do the bridge, it'll be fun as well. Get that done. Um, so that's what I'm working on. This is the biggest delay, to be honest. Is I found an easy, relatively easy method, a quick method to do this. This took me about, I don't know, 45 minutes so far to, <laughs> to do these 10 tracks. Um, but I'm not finished with them yet. Um, but I'll just keep on cracking. I'm just going to do batch by batch, do all the track and turnouts. I need to do a specific section. And then here we go into some more, well, let's call them advanced electronics. This still needs to be mounted underneath there. Um, and what this is, this is a, a three-way switch and it's going to be set to three um, different positions. First one is I'm running trains on the main. The second one is I'm going to be uh, programming on the main, but only on a specific dedicated piece track. And the third one is I'm going to use the um, special programming track, which is the same track as the programming on the main track. Um, but then the main and, and all the rest is off. Um, I need to do, yeah, we're working on that. Not as easy as it looks. But because you're switching a 5 amp system, you probably want to have a relay uh, do that. Uh, at least I've been told. <laughs> I'm not an electrical guy. Um, and so that's what this is all about. But if you're interested, let me know in the comments down below and I'll uh, talk about that in a separate video. So let us enjoy the lift gate one more time. Let me see that little pop-up feature. Surprise. This is it. The only thing I haven't made yet is a way to <laughs> to keep it up. So I'm just using this uh, yeah bungee cord for now. This video was made possible by ABR Model Works, providing kits and accessories for all model railroaders. Because the lift gate sets on another video. Thank you guys all for watching. That's it for today. Looking to support the model railroading community? Check out the Dubai Trains Patreon page to find out how you can contribute.